Welcome back to Core DDI Basic Configuration. We'll now start Module 5, Managing Grid Members. By the end of this module, you'll be able to manage grid members, including restarting, rebooting, shutting down members. We'll also look at how to restore NIOS appliances to factory defaults through the CLI. We'll then look at different files you can generate, traffic capture and support bundle, and finally, we'll look at available technical resources. So let's start with managing grid members. When we're dealing with grid members and we're talking about protocol, often we might need to restart services. Anytime the InfoBlox determines you've taken an action where a restart of protocol services needs to happen, a yellow restart bar will appear at the top of the screen. At that point, click the restart button and the restart dialog will open. We've got two main choices here. We can restart if needed, or we can force a restart. There are three available restart methods. We can restart all members and servers within a restart group. We can restart simultaneously for all members, or we can restart sequentially for all members. Remember that we have protocol redundancy in these, so sequentially sometimes can actually be less optimal than simultaneous. So restarting services in method one. We want to see what is going to be restarted. The bar appeared, we need to look. So we're going to click on the poll members button, which is a box made up of little boxes at the top of the grayed out section of the window. When we click on that, the grid master will poll each of the grid members to identify which protocol changes need a restart of services. The other way for us to restart services is if we navigate to Grid, Grid Manager Members, and we're looking at the members, we can click the Restart Services in the toolbar. This is the same Restart Grid Services dialog that appears. Let's look at different controls we have available for the grid members. So we select the grid member, and we go to the Control drop-down menu in the toolbar. The options we have are Restart, Reboot, Shutdown, Force HA Failover, and restart the GUI. For restart, this is going to restart all the software and services on that member. Reboot actually causes the member to perform a new startup and will cause a more serious service interruption. Right below restart, we have shutdown. This actually powers down the member selected. The member has to be powered back up either by hand or with IPMI. Next, we have Force HA Failover. This is only available when we have a high availability pair. In the screenshot you see, we have a single member, so notice it's grayed out. For a high availability pair, this would cause the active and passive nodes to swap roles. And finally, we have Restart the GUI, which causes the web services to be restarted on the selected member. Resetting a member is different than control. Resetting a member is talking about setting the box back to some form of factory default or some way towards that. So let's look at these from the least impactful to the most. The first we have is Reset Database NIOS. This set resets the NIOS database only, our protocol data, and data relevant to our build of our grid. If you are running other licensed features such as Network Insight, it would still preserve that data and that can be cleared with a reset database and then that feature. This only clears the database. Then we have reset all, which resets the NIOS appliance database, its configuration, its protocol data, and network settings, and this includes the log files. Finally, we have reset all licenses. This clears everything in reset all and also removes the licenses. So let's take a look at executing these. First, we have reset all, and it warns you that the entire system will be erased to default settings. It then gives us a warning, all in capital letters, so we know it's got to be very serious and we should read it. Please do. This is going to actually reset your entire info blocks. It then prompts us, are you sure? And we can say yes or no. In this case, I said no because that's not what I wanted to do. Next, we type to reset database. This tells us that it's going to reset the database, but it actually gives us some options here. 
on what network settings it'll have after the reset. Because we're only resetting the database, I can choose to maintain the IP address and log back in. It does warn us the entire database will be erased. Now let's look at how we can generate files. So for traffic capture, we're going to navigate Grid, Grid Manager, Members. We're then going to select the member where we'd like to execute the traffic capture. Once we have the member selected, we can choose traffic capture from the toolbar panel. This will open up the traffic capture dialog. So we've got a couple options here in the traffic capture dialog. The first thing is we can change the member. So if we've opened this dialog and realized that we need to be doing the traffic capture on another member, we can simply click select and switch members. Then we pick which interfaces to run the traffic capture on. As we saw earlier, the InfoBlox has numerous Ethernet ports. All is safe as long as you don't want to have promiscuous listening. All is actually advised because then I can see when packets are being directed to the wrong interface of the info blocks. I can then set a maximum amount of time for the capture to run, and I have start and stop buttons for the capture. We also are going to have the size of the capture being displayed so that if it is growing too quickly, we can stop it before the seconds to run expires. Last, we've got download. And one note here is anytime we start a traffic capture, it's going to delete the traffic capture before. So always download the traffic capture that exists before starting a new one. Once we've downloaded our traffic capture, we see that it's saved as a tar.gz file. We want to decompress and extract this, and once it's opened, we will find the traffic.cap. We can then open that in Wireshark or the application of your choice for viewing packet captures. Next, we'll look at generating a support bundle. Again, we navigate to Grid, Grid Manager Members. We select our member, and we choose Download, and then Support Bundle. One quick note, this is where you would download the SNMP MIBs for InfoBlox as well. When we click on Support Bundle, the Download Support Bundle dialog opens, and we have a number of files here that are additional to the default Support Bundle. One quick note is Core Files is checked by default. Be aware that core files can be incredibly large and may slow down the support bundle download. So you may want to take your initial support bundle without core files. Support will ask you for core files if needed. Once you've selected the files you want, click OK to download. Let's finish up this module by looking at how we can locate technical resources. We begin by navigating to the support site, which is at HTTPS support.infoblocks.com. We register to receive access. If we've already registered, we can log in. If not, at the very bottom, there is a link to register. What's available in the support site? We've got a knowledge base where you can search for articles based on keywords with known issues and resolutions. We can open a case. We can download new software and patches. We've got access to technical docs. And we've got My Blocks, which we saw earlier when we looked at licensing. This is a personalized customer portal, which has stuff relative to your account. In the support site under Technical Docs, we see that we can download guides for NIOS appliances. We've got available documentation, including the administrator guide that we saw in the GUI. But we also have installation guides, release notes, and other reference docs for our NIOS appliances. Just as a refresher, let's remember that in the Help menu on the InfoBlox Grid UI, we've got a documentation section which has the most common documents you need, the admin guide, CLI guide, an API documentation, a WAPI documentation, and also our CSV import reference. In this module, we learned about managing grid members in terms of restarting, rebooting, shutting down, and then we also looked at how to restore a NIOS appliance to factory defaults through the CLI. We looked at generating files, both traffic capture and support bundle, and we looked at available technical resources. We'll now begin lab five. In this lab, you'll start the DNS and DHCP service on grid members. You'll force restarts of a grid member, generate a traffic capture, and open that capture in Wireshark, and finally, you'll generate a support bundle.